Hi everyone, my name is Amanda Gove and today I'm going to be giving a presentation on the Canadian Conservation Corps, which is a three-part program with the Canadian Wildlife Federation. I'm just going to talk about all it entails and how you can get involved. So first I want to talk about the background of the Canadian Wildlife Federation and their mission is to conserve and inspire the conservation of Canada's wildlife and habitats for the use and enjoyment of all. So they conduct its activities through a cooperative approach working with people, corporations, nonprofits, and governments to inspire the collaboration in wildlife conservation. So in order to do this, they made a program called the Canadian Conservation Corps, which is a three-part program designed to engage young Canadians in our natural and cultural heritage through service, adventure, and reflection. So this program recruits ages 18 to 30 and engages over a nine-month program. That includes wilderness journeys, field works, and community service projects. The CCC is a program developed by the Canadian Wildlife Federation and funded by the Government of Canada through the Canada Service Corps Initiative. So what this means is that it's a free program, which is amazing because with young Canadians, we're just getting out of school or we don't have our full-time jobs yet and the government knows this. So what they did is they made this reimbursement plan where for stage one example, um, you go on the wilderness journey, I didn't have all the appropriate gear, so they give you a budget of list of everything you need. You go to the store, you purchase them, you take a picture of your receipt, and you send the receipt to the Canadian Conservation Corps, and they'll reimburse you, which is amazing because you're not out of money because a lot of us can't afford all these things for voyages. And for stage two, you have to go to a different place out of your own home and that means rent and groceries and gas money but the great thing is that this program will pay for all three of them when you're away and they know that you just can't up and root your life like we have bills with our cell phones car insurance etc so you actually just give proof that you pay these bills and they will also reimburse that so you don't have any limitation based on funding which is absolutely amazing for a program to do this so first I want to talk about what this program is and I'm going to break it down into different sections of stage one, stage two, and stage three. So stage one is the training and exhibition. So this is a full-time commitment. You are one month away from home and this helps CCC members learn about themselves, their peers, and the community. It involves introspective activities, physical challenges, time for participants to bond closely together as a high-functioning team because you're coming together with your goal of caring about conservation. So how this month is broken down, it is two weeks of Wilderness Voyage and Outward Bound Canada puts this on. It can be kayaking trip, canoeing, hiking, dog sledding, anything that you can imagine for transportation. And then there's two weeks of training. So you receive Wilderness First Aid, Canadian Wildlife Federation Wild Education, which tells you how to do activities with youth and incorporate different aspects of conservation. And you also get an Outdoor Council of Canada Field Le Leadership Certification for paddling and hiking, which is amazing because you can put on different events and be the one planning them. So I'm going to talk about my stage one experience. My group team was the Late Pirates. We were out on different lakes and we were always late to everything, so that's why we coined the name. We were in Zec Kippewa, which was in Quebec, and we all came together because of our common interest of conservation. So I'm going to quickly just introduce my team. First we have Cora, who's from Windsor, Ontario, Benoit, who's from Gatineau, Quebec, Julia from Barrie, Ontario, Annabelle from Quebec City, Daria from Hammonds Plains, Nova Scotia, Spencer from Hampton, New Brunswick, Brandon from Montreal, Quebec, and me from Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. So my experience with the Outward Bound, we did a canoeing trip and you don't have to have any experience within this because I think I was canoeing once before and I would just sit in the canoe and I would just paddle and hope for the best. But the good thing here is you have two leaders along with your group and they actually teach you all these things that you need to know that will strengthen your ability. So there's no worries to be scared and say, oh, I've never canoed before. I'm not going to be good enough because you will be great once you get your techniques. It does take a few days to get used to them, but once you do, you are just so proud of yourself that you're doing this. So this is how the breakdown of this 
outward bound experience goes. So one week we learn about the different practices of wilderness voyage, like how to cook on a fire, keep a fire going, which doesn't sound difficult, but when it's raining outside and you need to cook your food on the fire, you definitely need some tips and tricks. <laughs> Paddling techniques, like I said, and no trace practices, because your common goal is conservation. You don't want to show up on this land and leave a bunch of garbage and the way it wasn't there before so it's really good to learn these practices and then the second week the participants take turns being the leader so you do this to develop your own leadership skills so per day there's going to be two leaders and you just navigate the day you pick the campsites you wake everybody up in the morning get everybody energized and do stretching because you are paddling all day and you just develop your skills of a leader and a participant by helping your other leaders by participating in any activities they have. And like I said, we did a canoeing trip. So here's some pictures of our canoes. In the first picture, you can see all our items that are inside the canoe that we had to transport. And when you run out of lake space, you have to get to another lake. That means you have to portage, which is just moving all your items from one spot to another. So these last three pictures here, you can see the blue barrels, and that's what we kept our personal gear in. So I would have my tent, my clothes, anything that I had on me that would go in one barrel. And we also kept our food in a second barrel. So there would be snacks, our lunch, our kitchen utensils, and everything, and we would have to transport all of our gear from point A to point B in order to get to a new lake, and we would have to carry the canoe but you learn how to do this, you strengthen yourself. It is physical, but you are so proud of yourself at the end that you did it. And sometimes there's mishaps, like Annabelle here in this picture, she fell down because the barrels do get heavy and you do need a rest, but overall it was pretty amazing. You can see that I'm here in the gray hat. I was carrying my personal barrel in the front and a snack barrel in the back, and it wasn't that tough at the end, and especially when you're coming to the end of the trip when more portaging happens, you have less food because everybody eats them all. So it's pretty good, and it is physical, but we all got through it. And I just want to talk about the day in the life, what happens every day when you show up. So there are chores because things do need to be done. We had eight people, so there was two people per chore. So the chefs, they prep, they cook, they serve the meals. The hydros are the ones that do the dishes after the chefs are done. The pyros get the wood collection and they keep the fire going for the chefs. And the site manager tie up the boats, put away dry lines for our life jackets and helmets. They set up tarps, like you can see in this picture. The site managers would find place to put up a tarp and then find where you want to put the food barrels and the personal barrels and then put up clotheslines for us to dry our clothes because sometimes it does rain. The weather is always unpredictable. But after the site managers do that, everyone comes together and helps collect firewood. Because even though the pyros job is this, you help the pyros because you are having a fire for about six hours a day. You're cooking on the fire and then of course at night you want to sit around the fire because the fire is just so relaxing and talking and you're not anywhere with electricity so the light from the fire really helps. And after you're done collecting the firewood, you would go take your personal barrel, you would set up your camp, find a good place for your tent and see who you want to go by, find a level place so you're not rolling all night when you sleep. And then after that, the chefs will start. So this is a video of me and Cora cooking, and you can see Benoit in the corner adding to the fire. So you work together even though these are individual jobs, but you, they just have to keep the fire going and you have to cook the meals, which is pretty cool that you get to experience and learn how to do this. This meal, we used dehydrated chicken and we made butter chicken that night, which is pretty cool to have on a camping trip. And then after you're done supper, you get to sit down and you relax so most times you get to enjoy this nice sunset and that's the day in the life you paddle you do your chores and then you get to relax and not that every day doesn't go smoothly sometimes it rains so you have to go faster at one thing than the other but overall it is pretty amazing that you're doing all this and surviving just by yourself 
Then I took a video of one of our campsites, and as you can see, we all put our tents together. It is COVID time, so you're not allowed to share a tent, but we were able to put our tents close together. You can see the beautiful scenery, how the site managers put up the lines for our clothes and our helmets and life jackets. The site managers put up the tarp tarps for all our barrels and all our items and all these items that you do see you do have to carry and take with you in the canoe and we left nothing behind which seems like a lot of items but with the 10 of us it was pretty good and again the beautiful scenery because you are submerged in nature and it's just so beautiful relaxing and overall amazing and this is a video of our sailing day before I we went canoeing. I didn't realize you could sail with canoes, but we just all held the canoes together. We had to wear face masks due to COVID, but the wind took us down the, the lake and you can see us holding on together. And it was pretty amazing because it was just a new experience for mostly all of us and that we just didn't know you could do that, but it's pretty cool to see. And like I said, there's two weeks of camping, so you're with people constantly. You are waking up with these people, you are sleeping next to these people, <laughs> cooking meals together, just everything. You're never alone, except for on solo day. And this is to develop independence and rejuvenate yourselves. So we did a 24 hour solo. Just like I said, you're with everybody. Sometimes you just want to relax and just rejuvenate, read a book peacefully, even go to bed earlier and not have to worry about any chores or paddling. So we were 250 meters away from everyone else in the group and we could not take 50 steps away from our tent. So we couldn't take 50 steps away because then we could potentially meet up with somebody else that's beside us and you just want to spend the 24 hours alone. Um, I have you have whistles so you blow a whistle everyone can hear you just if you need help or anything so you're not that far away so it's not scary it's just time for a peaceful night by yourself um, for my solo I went down by the water and I was able to read a book I journaled we were only given two tasks and that was to write a letter to ourselves that we'll, we'll get in six months just to read about our time and how we were feeling and then the second one was to take a gift back to the group. So one of my books I had a medicinal plant book and I was able to find one of the plants that were on the list and it's called a goldenrod which you can see the yellow plant on the screen and I just told everybody about it, gave everybody information so just new knowledge. Some people wrote letters on bark which is cool because I still have mine but most of us we slept. I remember sleeping for like 12 hours that night, just catch up on everything because it, although it is super fun, it is like a lot of physical labor and you're just constantly doing things. So it was a nice time to just meditate and have time to yourself. Here is my OBC trip. So we started up at the start of the string and went all the way to the finish. We did 80 kilometers in total with seven lakes, two rivers, and a lot of portaging it felt. Although we probably porta portaged four times and the longest one was like one kilometer, but we had to do three trips. Just felt like an awful lot of time with all our barrels, but we survived and it was amazing that I can say that I did this because this was definitely a once in a lifetime thing for me. I'm hoping to do it more, but it's pretty cool that I was able to successfully do this. And I think everybody who loves the wilderness or just wants to get out and challenge themselves, this is an amazing way to do that. So stage two, this is immersive field work. So it is full-time commitment and it is three months away from home, but it's an opportunity to work with established leaders in the conservation and environmental field with categories such as habitat creation, restoration, wildlife management, environmental science, or educational outreach. And the CWF recognizes that participants acquire authentic experience in nature doing meaningful services learning. So you take what you learned from stage one about conservation and you kind of implement it in your stage two and you're just learning and gaining more experience overall which is pretty amazing. And this program wants you to go out and explore Canada. So I'm from Nova Scotia and they didn't want me to stay in Nova Scotia for my stage two. So I was lucky enough to go to PEI 
for the Surrey area and branch of the PEI Wildlife Federation, which was amazing. I was able to go and visit PEI and work, and they want you to get out just so you can broaden your horizons, basically. They want you all over Canada. And normally they would take participants from Nova Scotia and put them all the way in British Columbia, but just due to COVID restrictions right now, they can't do that. But hopefully in the future, they're able to have more of a dispersed place. But I'm so glad that I was able to go to PEI because I met amazing people and did amazing work. And I'm going to be talking about some of the participants we met in the field work we did. So Daria and Spencer, you might recognize them from my nice stage one. They are also from Atlantic Canada, so we were all able to go together to the same placement, which was amazing. But not only was it us three, we also met Jenna. She did a canoeing expedition in northern Ontario, and she's originally from Ontario, but she moved to Nova Scotia. And since she's in Atlantic Canada, she was able to come to PEI with us. So it's amazing that we were able to strengthen my relationship with Daria and Spencer, but also got to meet Jenna from the CCC. And we all bonded together over our different experiences. And it was quite amazing that we got to meet her. So next is what we did for work. So there's a bunch of pictures on the screen, as you can see. So I'm going to start off with soil sampling. I have an agar in my hand and what you do is you put it in the ground, twist it, and you take different levels of soil samples and send them to Agriculture Canada, which is pretty cool because I definitely never did soil sampling before, so I definitely broadened my horizons with that. Next you see Daria. She is using that tool to break apart a beaver dam and you had to bust a beaver dam because the dams would make the lakes at a standstill and the rivers at a standstill and that means the fish can't get from one spot to another and some fish leave the ocean to go spawn and then they can't get back into the ocean after they're done spawning due to these beaver dams so that was the idea there this next picture is of me and Jake doing water samplings he's in the water collecting um, different items that need it and I would record on a sheet this is Tyler doing green crab work which was sent to DFO. He would trap the green crab, record data for them, and that would be sent over to DFO. This is Spencer doing bug identification which is pretty cool. We were able to take that piece of paper that's in his hand. It had different um, categories of bugs and we had to find out which one was which which was challenging but we got it done. This is electrofishing and Mike is the one with this machine on his back which is Basically a tool you put in the water, it shocks the fish, and there's Jenna and Maddie with nets. You scoop up the fish, put them in a pan, and you're just there to measure them, sex them, see what kind of fish there are, and then they're let back in the river. It's just to see what is in the river for spawning events or other projects that are coming up. This is me, Daria, and Spencer in a canoe that ties with the picture of Maddie and Tyler. We were doing clumping in Basin Head, and that's when you take blue mussels with giant Irish moths and put them in a bag together because the giant Irish moths are endemic, which means they only live in PEI, and they just want to plenish Basin, Basin Head with these different ecosystems. And I don't only want to talk about my experience, but I also want to talk about my cohorts from Stage 2 experience. So Cora and Brandon, they worked at Scales Nature Park, which focuses on the conservation of reptiles, amphibians, fish through education, research, and conservation activities. So this picture here is them building a snake herbarium, which is just a snake habitat, which is pretty cool that they got to work with all these amphibians. They did a lot of work and outreach, which was pretty amazing for them. Annabelle was able to go to British Columbia for POW, which is Protect Our Winters. It's the fight against climate change with outdoor activities to bring awareness. So she spent a lot of time skiing and giving educational outreach to these participants and writing blogs and posts about climate change, which is a pretty amazing thing. And she got beautiful scenery there. Next is Julia. So she did Toronto Wildlife Centre, which is a place for wildlife rescue, hospital, and rehabilitation centre. So not only did she get to volunteer, but she was able to gain certifications that allowed her to do much more. As you can see with this goose, she's able to feed him. But she did go through extensive training to get to where she is. And that's one of the things that the CCC brings you. You're able to not also volunteer, but do amazing things like she's a 
able to do here. So next and lastly is stage three. So this is an outreach service. It's a part-time commitment. It's five months at home or wherever you would like to do it. The participants share their knowledge with others in their home communities across Canada. It's experiential learning with engagement in your community using a conservation issue of your choice. So whatever you're passionate about, you get to implement this program in your community and get your friends, families involved and just be able to say, I have this idea. It's going to help the world. I want to do it home, which is pretty cool. And you get to engage others in the community as well. So not only do you have this project, but you also get to do an outreach. So right now I'm doing an outreach to all you by just telling you about the program and what my experience was. So stage three projects can be collaborative with other participants and alumni. You can involve new initiatives or conservation issues already tackled. So for my idea, I want to do a ghost gear cleanup and ghost gear are the lobster traps and ropes and buoys that are left in our oceans after fishing season. And this could just be from weather, entanglement, anything that you can think of. And Cape Breton is such a fishing community that I really want to work and clean our oceans, especially how I used to work with the Cape Breton Fish Harvesters Association by collecting data on lobster boats. So I kind of saw firsthand what the weather can do and take all these traps ashore. So I want to be able to go out into our oceans and do a big cleanup, which would be amazing and help the marine wildlife around these areas. And some other ideas for outreach are you can do presentations to youth using your Wild Outside certification from stage one. You can present to your old schools, online presentations, webinars, a lot of social media posts to tell everybody about what you're doing, what you learned, and anything like that, and informational posters. For community projects, you can do a community pollinator garden, artwork designs, podcasts about environmental issues, YouTube channels, garbage cleanups, whether that be on the shore, a park, anywhere that you're interested in up or just see a mess and you want to be the difference in that area. You can do guided nature walks, basically anything that has to do with conservation and what you're passionate about. And if you don't have any ideas, the Canadian Conservation Corps are so helpful. You can reach out to anybody, alumni, and they'll help. And you can even just incorporate different uh, organizations around you that you want to volunteer with and help them. So here is the website. I'm going to quickly walk us through it. You'll come to the Canadian Wildlife Federation, but then there's a part for the Canadian Conservation Corps. You just press learn more apply now and the registration is completely online you just have to fill out your information what your experience is if you have any other experience write why what's your favorite experience with the outdoors basically very straightforward you need two references and it's quite easy to go on and decipher yourself but if you ever need any I am here for you. You can email me at mandagove129 at hotmail.com or even text me at 902-322-3673. So thank you for letting me do this presentation to you and I really hope that anybody that's interested gets involved. If you have any questions at all, being minor to major, I'm always here to answer and I'd be happy to help. But for sure check out the website. They have a lot of information. You get to meet the alumni. There's videos. They have a more breakdown of what stage one, two, three entail. But if you want somebody who's went through the program, feel free to message me at any time. So thank you again.